Okay, and now the uh, one of my other most favorite places on earth, the uh, Stagecoach Inn Museum. Well, we got the whole coffee party. Um, I'm Dana. Hi, Pam. And we also have one of our new volunteers coming to this time. And this is the town of Chris Rock here. So mm, oh this is a public talk about things to you. And just so you know what you're getting here, um, there's a uh, so we have, um, Excuse me, could, could I just ask you to, to use the microphone? Certainly. Certainly. Thank you. So what you have coming around is Pam has a um, annual report and then Kathy is handing out a year to date financials. So we'll get that to that at the end. That's just sort of an update for you after we're done with the presentation. Um, like the Chumash Museum, we are on a calendar year. So we go January to December and it always does get kind of tricky um, trying to figure out how to present here. Um, and so what we're gonna do is the annual report is on the year 2021. And that's what we're gonna talk about first. And I'll be kind of going through the report with you. I'll have a screen version and we'll just be walking through that. And then we'll have a chance to kind of look forward from the end of that report which is actually where we are right now in 2022. And we'll look at what's happened in the six months since then. And so you'll get a chance to see what we've done with the whole CRPD grant um, that was issued to us or awarded to us in 2021, July, and that we're just um, wrapping up now. And so you'll get to see it all. Um, and I think, um, Kathy, there's also some stage lines uh, there's enough that each person could have one to look at. If I could, I'd love to collect those back afterwards. The Stage Lines is our uh, monthly newsletter. And these are issues that I'm handing out are various months in 2021. But I wanted to share them with you because I'm really proud of this publication. Um, we've come a long way with it. You're looking at the old fashioned paper version and we only print a handful of those for our members who uh, are not comfortable reading it digitally online. Um, but it does give me a chance to kind of show you what I'm talking about. The digital version of it is fully interactive. Um, our members can purchase tickets from there. They can learn more about anything and everything that's in there, lots of clickable links. And, um, but I did wanna give you a feel for the types of information that we're sharing with our, our um, members each month. So we can start out then with, um, with the annual report. Did everyone get a copy of that? Yep. Okay. So um, you might wonder why um, the cover of a uh, stagecoach in museum has an oak tree on it. Well, um, the reason is because this is kind of an analogy for how the year 2021 was for us. In 2021, um, we were unfortunately having to take out a centuries old oak tree that graced our property for many, many years standing beside the stagecoach and museum. That was in February. Um, so it'd been a crazy start to the year already. We had January when we were closed. We'd been closed down in the holidays the prior year. And then um, we were hoping to open, um, but while we were still waiting to do that, in February, we needed to remove this oak tree. And so we really tried to, if you will, turn lemons into lemonades, with lemonade with this removal of the oak tree. And it became a, a great analogy for us of growth and renewal. Um, so starting at the beginning of your, um, your report there, um, maybe Pam just wants to say one or two words. She has a... Um, her letter here, did you want to say any kind of a welcome? Oh, yeah. So I am so thrilled to be with you guys, the the masters of, of uh, the park district here in Conejo. And I have to say, um, the, the work that you have supported us with this year has been phenomenal. We have, um, uh, we had two, well, we had three patios completed or almost completed, and they are fabulous. You're going to love them. Um, we had our bathroom floors redone. And again, thanks to you guys. It, it, it's amazing. We had um, rugs bought and cleaned and fixed and repaired and windows cleaned and um mannequins i mannequins are scary to me they're like really scary 
In fact, when I was a little girl and I went to the stagecoach in and I saw the mannequins, I thought they were ghosts. I did. They scared the crap out of me. And they still do. But hey, people love them. And you put a wig on them. They're not as terrifying. But hey, we got mannequins from uh, from the grant. And, and oh my gosh, it's like a whole new place. Um, I'm just so thrilled with your with your support and with your help especially oh my gosh on the back patio it was so dangerous and you guys really helped us secure make it a secure and safe place so um yay thank you um thank you thanks cameron if we can just go forward um a little bit further so we're going to flip through the uh, pam's introduction and my introduction to the table of contacts and then you'll see membership there on page two um so um this again we're looking at 2021 um first and uh, just taking a quick look at membership um, we were very fortunate because through the pandemic our membership remained extremely loyal and we actually had record membership renewals during 2021. Um, and even during 2020, when we were able to do very little at the museum in terms of being open at all to the public, um, and we were doing some great outreach, but our members were very, very supportive. So we're super grateful for that. Um, uh, our membership has um, changed just a little bit the way we go about doing it. Um, and there's been a little bit of a shift. We've always got about 50% of our membership coming from seniors. And um, that is still true. Um, uh, many of our members are seniors, but what we have seen is an increase in family memberships. And what that means is that while we have currently 219 at the end of 2021 active memberships, that doesn't mean 219 people. Those that are sponsors uh, might have multiple people, and those that are families often have three to five people. And so there's a lot more people enjoying the life that goes on at the Stagecoach and Museum. I, I'd like to add this year, we added uh, some new membership benefits I'm super excited about. We, start, uh, we added something called a sustaining membership so that people can, um, can sustain us every month with a monthly donation. And with that donation, they get added perks. And um, we even had this amazing metal sign built for us to put um, their names on as, as uh, in gratitude as, as a friend of the museum. Um, I actually researched many different ways that we could honor, honor them. And you would not believe some of the new members we got. We got a new member who's who's a master at ironworks, a master blacksmither, and he actually built this sign. And I'm sure Jana is going to show you some more of his work that he's spread throughout the property. But it's just truly incredible. But um, I, I, it's. We just pushed it out. We only have three sustaining members, but I'm super excited because I think it's a start. You know, it's a good groundbreaking start to move forward into another realm, into uh, sustaining, you know. I had, the, I got the idea from the art museum, believe it or not. The art museum said, oh, the pandemic's been rough on us, but thank God for our sustaining members. And I thought, Oh, well, tell me more. We need to <laughs> more. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited about that. So uh, the sustaining members are members who are giving something each month. Um, and so you, too, for $100 a month can be a bowl whacker. And your name will be up on the sign, which is in the shape of a stagecoach being pulled by horses. Um, our basic member uh, benefits for our regular membership continue to be free admission to the museum on the days that we're open. Currently, that is Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, through a good part of 2021, it was only Saturdays, but we were able to add Wednesdays back. And of course, at the beginning of 2021, we were only able to be open as an outdoor museum. And then towards spring, we were able to start opening the interiors. But that is a wonderful uh, benefit of members. 
uh, membership is that they do come free and we have so many activities going on, even just during our regular museum hours. So we have members, especially the family members who will just come and hang out one day, have a picnic, listen to uh, live music on our front porch. Um, another day they'll come back and tour. Another day they'll come back and do the things like hunts and gold panning. So um, that's really a great benefit of membership. They also get the stage lines, which you have, and that will tell them all the events that are coming up. And I found this very interesting, almost point for point, um, when Barbara was talking about what things were up and what things were down for them during the pandemic, we were almost opposite. We had more events than we've ever had in 2021. Absolutely event after event after event because we couldn't be up open with the interiors of the museum. So we came up with all kinds of fabulous outdoor and evening events. So um, that was one thing that was different. And there's several others that were exactly opposite. So it was interesting for me. Um, again, uh, the members enjoy basic things like um, discounted prices on some of the events. Um, also, they get discounts in our Emporium gift shop. And um, they um, get to have two special membership programs each year. So those were amongst our special events this year as well. Um, turning to the next page, uh, I'd like to talk just briefly about um, some of our different curators. Um, we have a curator of history, uh, Carol Anderson, who's been with us many, many years, I think over 20 years. Uh, we have many members and volunteers who have been with us um, 20, even 30 years. Um, and I think that says a lot about our organization. It's one thing to remain a member for 20 or 30 years, but we have some of these volunteers who literally have worked there every year for 20 or 30 years. Um, and we learn so much from them every day. It's my favorite thing about my job. Is I always am learning something from, from those who came before. Um, so Carol Anderson does a great job of keeping our archives and also reporting in our stage lines on different um, aspects of local history. Our curator of um, education, Jackie Pizzitz, plays in a very important role because she's in charge of our school tours. And this is an area where we have many docents um, out working with the school children. They normally come on Wednesday mornings and we have um, four, four different stations that the students rotate through. And each of those stations usually has uh, anywhere from two to five or six um, docents uh, manning them, depending on what they're doing. So it's a full group. And again, these are all volunteers. So it's a very interactive, uh, what we like to call hands-on history program. And um, it requires a lot of volunteers. So we didn't have school tours um, very much during 2021 because of the pandemic, of course. But to be honest, it would have been very difficult for us to man it, even if we could have had them because our volunteer base was dramatically reduced. Um, and, and they're all in the 70 year old range. Yeah. <laughs> at least. At, at the minimum. <laughs> yeah, we, we do have an older volunteer population. Um, and so looking at the other extreme, um, we like to look at the children that are on our property. And so these are some of the, um, the pictures that our school children have drawn about their experience here on the property. And the quote there, um, the basic gist of it from our first director of the Stage Coaching Museum, Dr. Cyril Anderson in 1967, is that the children really benefit from looking at their roots and how life was before. And so um, this is an opportunity for the children to, as you can see from the drawings, learn how the pioneer children played with hoops and sticks or learn how um, the Pioneer children had a, a classroom activity in a one-room schoolhouse. Uh, they're actually experiencing these things with the docents and, and trying out the tools and playing the musical instruments. And so it's really a great program. And we're very excited that um, we were able the second half of the year to, to have some school tours and we're actually fully booked uh, for next year and um, getting started in late September. Um, we're going to the next page. Um, we have a curator of collections, Blancarelli. Now, there's one that's been here for 30 years, I know for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, she is fabulous and has such a passion for the museum and is very busy in the collections room, um, uh, accessioning items and working, working her fingers to the bone. And I'm very excited that um, we've been able to get her some assistance. Uh, one of the people who's been helping her is Kathy Passiri. Um, Kathy came in and, and just dove into so many things. Uh, she said yes to I think everything that anyone asked her. 
And so we kind of said, slow down a minute, Kathy, because we think that you should run our Pioneer Jamboree this year. And that's a huge job. So she took that on and Blanc has been waiting patiently um, until after June 11th when the Jamboree finished up because she knows that that's when Kathy was gonna start helping her in collections. And now Kathy's been doing that and it's worked out really great, I think for both of them. Um, and we do have some amazing items in our collection and we did during the pandemic receive quite a few donations because people were home cleaning their houses. And um, so we actually, um, I think, had some record amounts of items coming in. And um, we, on the other hand, were also doing our own spring cleaning. And so we were letting some things go that didn't quite serve our purposes anymore and making room for all these wonderful new items. One of the most important items that we um, acquired during this time, or it was a donation, was from Michikui, um, who sadly passed on in June of 2021. And he uh, gifted us his California mud wagon. And this is a stagecoach that has been in our carriage house for many, many years. It's his prized possession. Uh, it was on loan to us, and now it is um, property of the museum. And so we were thrilled to have that. And uh, that reminds us each time we go to the carriage house of Mitch and all the wonderful stories he used to tell as a docent in the carriage house. Um, in, a, in addition to that, we have, um, we have two... Um, two wagons that are being rebuilt um, uh, that are, it's quite impressive. Uh, one wagon was in the, uh, well, the, the wagon that was in the front kind of, it, it said, we said goodbye to it, but we got another wagon and it was completely rebuilt by one of, one of our uh, docents. It looks fabulous and um, it has a, uh, covered wagon on top of it. It's just really fabulous. And another wagon that's being rebuilt currently is a spring wagon to um, authentic standards. The fellow who's taken that project on has been researching and working with um, actual experts who rebuild spring wagons in Wisconsin or Michigan, someplace far away. And um, and including the actual colors of the original spring wagons. So um, he's halfway done right now. If you want to come over and see his incredible, incredible work, you've got to come over and see it. It's really, it's almost done. And it is amazing. Amazing. It's gorgeous. And um that brings us to our docent chair. It's the page right before that, Cameron. Yeah, there you go. Um, our volunteers and docents, of course, are the lifeblood of the museum. And Stacia Simmerall has been our docent chair for some time, but she is um, that she was our, our chair in 2021. And now we have um, co-chairs because uh, that is a huge job. We have a, a very large volunteer base. Um, we actually mail to over 100 volunteers. During the pandemic, of course, many of them were not coming in, but that doesn't mean that they weren't doing work for us. We have people that have been helping behind the scenes from their homes, and then we have people that, as the museum was able to open up as an outdoor museum, were coming in and working on projects on the property, and um, they, um, they get involved in everything from, um, you can see on the next slide that there, we have blacksmiths um, that are making all kinds of wonderful creations for our emporium and people working um, in many different capacities. Um, one of those capacities is our information and technology. And I do wanna pause on this one for just a minute because this is an area where CRPD was hugely instrumental in helping us kind of get up to the current time period. <laughs> um, as a historical museum, we like to have a lot of relics, but not in the areas of technology. And we did have plenty. So in information and technology, um, through our CRPD grant that um, was ending in uh, the mid, uh, middle of 2021, we were able to um, put together much better connectivity um, in our computer systems. We were able to um, have presentation um, technology for putting on Fun Friday movies with a large screen movie theater um, setup in on the lawn out front, and also to um, bring good sound to all of our concerts and performances, which there were many of including um, this year we started a speaker series where we had six speakers from 
all over and um and most most of them natives of uh, Thousand Oaks or or just with really interesting jobs that deal with history. And uh, that was very successful for first year around. Um, next year, I, I, I'm excited to expand it and um, continue it. Um, Okay, um, moving past the end, most of you are most familiar with that structure on our property, but you may not be aware that we actually have seven structures on our property um, uh, in an area over four acres. Um, so moving to the Heritage Oak Grove, um, I get, wanted to pause there for just a second. That's on page 14. And the reason um, this ties back to the cover and again, the inspiration for our year in 2021. Um, so when we took out the oak tree, we wanted to preserve the past, and we also wanted to develop for the future. And so um, that beautiful oak tree, we were able to put together a meter for tracking fundraising. And this is what we used to track to um, raise and track the $25,000 that were required to match the CRPD grant. And it was in the Oak Grove area, which went through many transformations during that time period, uh, making rustic furniture from the limbs of the tree, and also putting out a series of four videos uh, that are available on QR code signage when you're sitting in the Oak Grove. Uh, you can also see them on our website. And um, those are offering a very unique look at some of the um, very old inhabitants of our uh, area, the oak trees. And I think it's the only place that I'm aware of where you can sit in a small oak grove where you see the saplings from the original tree that came from the oaks, as well as the 40 year young tree that we planted to replace the oak. And you can learn all about how important the oaks were to the Chumash and, um, and learn how to date an oak tree. We worked with a dendrologist to do that and we're doing a timeline project. So where we're using a slice of the oak tree to try and mark major events in local history. Um, we're, we're gonna go quickly here. You don't, um, we wanna um, uh, highlight some of our other curators. We have the Timber School curator, the blacksmith shop and carriage house curators, the Tri Village, curator, and um, of course, highlighting the special tours that we um, continue to have uh, throughout, throughout our um, week. On the pages 19 and 20, this is a real quick overview of all the activities and events that have gone on. And um, our three new activities that we offer on all museum days that are open, our gold panning, um, we have a brand new sluice that was built for the property. Um, live music, we have volunteer musicians that are there every Wednesday and Saturday during music, um, museum hours, and that's been a really successful program. And then um, we also have hunt challenges. This started with a, a, a new event we introduced um, in the spring, since people couldn't um, pick up and look for Easter eggs. That was not really a great thing to be doing during the pandemic. We had a twist on the idea and we looked for conejos or rabbits instead. And our blacksmiths made 36 rabbits that were scattered all over the property. And the youth went and tried to spot them and write down the number that was on the rabbit. And it was so much fun and so successful that it spawned a whole series of seasonal hunts. And that's become part of our, um, our appeal for not just children. You can't imagine how competitive the adults get with these hunts. And then also the events, which are on page 20. Um, we couldn't use the interiors of the museum, so we used the exterior porch area to put on grand porch performances. Um, we put on a playlet called Come Sip With Me, which was about Victorian tea etiquette. Um, the Ladies of Conejo, old time radio show. Uh, and then um, so the, the live musicians, as we mentioned. We also had pop-up concerts um, that used the front lawn in front of our um, of the museum and we had a series of what's called Stagecoach in After Dark um, concerts that we put on, uh, that was put on by TO Arts on our property. Uh, and you can see those, that's great music and a gorgeous setting under the stars. Those were extremely popular and that brought in a whole new set of guests. So you can look through there are some of our standard events, the Pioneer Jamboree, of course, we were able to still do that, a little bit different format, um, but lots of new events and um, some months were Three days during the weekend were booked with events. Okay. And as always, we um, we 
love our holidays at the inn and have special nights. We have museum theater, including Voices of an Old Conejo, in addition to some other things that we've added. Um, since we actually have people who are really interested in doing museum theater. Um, and of course, weddings. We always um, have beautiful weddings, um, some with very loud band of music. <laughs> one, one big area that we tried to expand to replace lost revenue was new kinds of facility use. I mentioned the concerts. So this is an outside group putting a concert in, on, on our property. Another thing that we did was filming. Um, in uh, 2021, we had a small film done using our blacksmith shop, um, and we just recently did um, a larger film with a three-day shoot, and this is a good source of income for us, so um, that's something we hope to expand on. And then we also started holding some different classes on the property. Um, Dance Stars um, once a week meets with young children doing dances um, on our front lawn and front porch, and there's a historical twist to some of those. They also did a dance camp this summer on our property and they did a, a really fabulous holiday recital um, in 2021. The last page before we hit the financials and uh, we'll just go for questions and financials, but um, the volunteer of the year uh, this past year in 2021 was Irene Seda, who is a facilitator of our IT department and so much more. Um, but I just wanted to highlight um, Irene and um, each of our volunteers is I don't know how we'd live without any of them. And, um, and we, we learned how difficult it was because some of them weren't able to come in during the pandemic. And so um, we will never uh, overlook the fact that our most important resource is our volunteers. Uh, the, the report winds up with our financials and um, it starts with our statement of activity from January through December of 2021. And what I just like to highlight for you is that we're, back in the black. <laughs> um, after 2021, and um, 2021, we had a loss of about $25,000. Um, if you look here, um, we're uh, in, a, in much better shape. And um, our statement of financial position um, is, is strong. Um, and to just bring you up more current, the single sheet you have is year to date in 2022. Um, and um, if you look there, you'll see um, that we um, are, are doing quite well um, with a healthy bank balance and, um, and a strong net, um, net operating revenue. And as you can see on the last page, we're looking ahead to 2022 with um, new signage and oh my gosh, there's the spring wagon right there. That's, um, that's the old version before he started rebuilding it to its, um, to its historical accuracy. And um, and as you can see, I think she's um, doing something. Very oh, I thought she... <laughs> very good. Okay, so there you go. Thank you. Do we do we have any questions? So any questions? I'm sure we have some questions and comments. Yes, Director Hopper. No, just a comment. Uh, thank you very much for the update and. It's pretty amazing with all of the challenges going on in the last couple of years, everything that you folks have been able to do with the help of all your volunteers. So uh, congratulations. And it's always wonderful to see an organization that's in the black. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Director uh, Hope? Well, as you know, I gave up a long time uh, place in the uh, volunteers. Uh, that was four years ago so that uh, Nellie could do it. And, um, you know, I kind of miss it. <laughs> but you, yeah. huh? We miss you. Oh, well, thank you. But anyway, I, uh, okay, well, I've already done that. <laughs> You've got experience. And my husband's been done too, so. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks for being here and, and an update is great. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, yes, Director Lundy, Director. Yes, real quick. You mentioned a blacksmith that had some type of special credentials. Could you quickly review that? 
Yes, um, this is Bobby Messinger. He has his own company, which is 4M Metals, and he's been responsible for signage all over the property. That's one of the big areas that our CRPD grants really helped us um, work with. And he um, is currently now in 2022, our coordinator of the blacksmith shop. And he is uh, able to teach workshops. Um, we have three blacksmiths all together that work regularly. We also have other people who have been trained. I've even tried my hand at tra being trained. Uh, it's not my thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, Bobby is looking at doing more and more training sessions. It previously is something we only did for our trained docents. You had to already be a docent before you could do blacksmith training, but we're looking at also possibly doing training for the general public uh, as soon as we get all of our volunteers who would like to be trained first. Now, is there some kind of national association of blacksmiths and so forth, and then they have to qualify in order to belong? Is he a member of that type of organization? Yeah, sure. There, there is, and there also are guilds, and we actually looked at forming a guild in Ventura County because there isn't one, um, but it's a lot of red tape, and um, what we've tried to do at our blacksmith shop is be completely old school. We were blessed with a beautiful blacksmith shop that was built of reclaimed wood, um, and the, all the tools in it came from the Hunt family out at Salto Ranch. It's all authentic, so we haven't... Um, to make it easier, got a more modern forge. We're out there cranking it the old way. And um, and so we wanna stick to that old school way. And in the guilds, um, there's certain things that you need to do and certain things you need to teach that we don't necessarily want to do. So we're still kind of exploring that, but uh, for now, we're um, just looking at, at teaching our own small workshops. Thank you. Richard Nichols. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for the update. Uh, I'm just uh, really impressed with the variety of activities that you're able to infuse into such a small facility and continue to uh, you know, make the most of it, whether it's indoors or outdoors. But it is, it's a wonderful facility. I, I stopped by there not too many months ago and we got an email from staff that uh, the back porch needed a little bit more work than was expected. So I just, oh, just stop by and take a look and yeah, there wasn't much left to it when they were making it apart. It's but beautiful again, now. <laughs> yes, yeah, I haven't I haven't been back to see it yet. But I just see little things like that where I know you folks capture whatever it is that you have there, whether it's a porch or a balcony, and make the most of it. So I've always been very impressed with that. Uh, it just kind of shows the creativity that's there. And the other thing I, I wanted to uh, continue to express my appreciation for is your your retaining to our heritage, whether it be local or even even skills from blacksmithing or whatever, where you know we kind of lose that from not working with our hands so much of our jobs now are office-based or retail or something. So we've lost that as a, as a community. But when we can see that, it kind of reflects back on how things were made and people will realize that over time. So thank you for keeping that, that legacy and that heritage alive. I know the kids get thrilled when they see it, but I even like to see it too, so thank you. Thank you. But if you we've seen nothing yet. <laughs> we've got more coming. All right. More coming. Uh, so I'd just like to say because they haven't really talked about themselves. Um, Jana, the new director, she became the director right when COVID hit. So that was yes. um, kind of a challenge. All of a sudden, the museum closed, and most of the volunteers can't even help. But she's had so many innovative programs. And it's had such a positive attitude. We're supposed to give and she's always dressed like this. I don't know if she goes to the grocery store. Yeah. I, I do. It's good marketing, right? <laughs> so whenever you see Jana on the property, she's always all dressed up. It has a lot of spirit, a lot of energy. Uh, she's raised a lot of money uh, for the uh, museum. And um, a lot of great work with docents. Because our docents that we've gotten in the last couple of years have just you know, been incredible, the things that they have done. So we've had docents for 30 years who, again, like Blanca, none of these people are paid. And and not. Jan is only, she's half paid, half volunteer for the amount of time she's putting in there. So um, Jana has been very innovative. And then Pam has just come in as the president recently. And uh, so during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and she started speaker series, film series, um, has brought in her husband to kind of oversee all of these projects. I don't know that he's been that happy with, but no. he's doing an amazing that. job though. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's sticking in there. So uh, these two women have put in a huge amount of effort 
I mean, all of the things they talked about uh, didn't just happen. It's because of the hours and hours and hours that they have put in most of the time um, Pam was working full time as she was doing it all. So, um, you know, thank you for really putting this to be a great facility which for our community, which our community is getting to know more of. We're getting as many visitors now in two days that they used to get in five. Oh, so more than that. Even more, okay. Yeah, even more. Mm -hmm. uh, on an average Saturday, we're getting between 52 and 75 visitors. And when, although it's the summer, so we're down to like 24. But on a good day before COVID, we were getting uh, yeah, when I used to volunteer there, I planned to grade papers and read, and mm -hmm. I don't volunteer there often anymore, but I thought I could do it in the summer. And, you know, I didn't get any reading then. <laughs> People no. just kept coming. I had to keep talking. Well, so, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Even Wednesdays are crazy. That's when I, I was actually, there. Actually, I was, I was in San Luis Obispo yesterday on a Wednesday with four after four after four after four, but I, I actually had someone come and grab me and say, it's almost time for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's that late. You know, um, because when, when they come, they don't really want to leave, <coughs> and they're so excited about everything that we have to offer. But um, honestly, it's, it's really, we have two, two docents that busy on a Wednesday. We've, that's kind of insane. we've had a huge outreach and a lot of promotion and advertising, and that's made a big difference. Um, and our social media, we've really expanded during the pandemic and are very active on YouTube with lots of different videos, also on Facebook and Instagram. But um, I wanted to mention that um, through CRPD, through uh, the $3,000 open house grant that uh, Barbara was mentioning, they're going to be using soon. We used that for our Pioneer Jamboree. And for the first time ever put in a junior page ad in the acorn, um, something we could never afford to do without CRPD's help. And we had over 525 people at our Pioneer Jamboree. Um, it was crazy busy and so much fun. And we also had more activities than we've ever had there. And CRPD was one of the booths that was there. And um, anyway, so a huge thank you to CRPD. Um, we would not be able to do a fraction of what we're doing. And the neatest thing about um, looking at our finances is to say, okay, not only are we in the black, not only do we have a real strong res revenue stream, but we've also got $75,000 worth of capital improvements on the property just in this past year. So that's a huge thing. And um, so I think uh, we're all um, working together and working hard and it seems to be working out. So thank you so much. We really enjoy being part of the CRPD family. And I have to tell you, uh